Saul Bass was uh, the great genius of movie credits. Hitchcock clearly admired this hot, young designer who was hanging on his every word in terms of filmmaking. If I look at a Saul Bass title sequence now, I can be entertained or I can think it's beautiful without having to see the feature that comes behind it. When you have somebody as incredibly gifted as Saul Bass collaborating with someone as incredibly gifted as Hitchcock, the results could be really extraordinary. Saul Bass really was the first to take us into the modern sensibility. I began as a graphic designer, and as part of my work, I created many film symbols for ad campaigns. I had felt for some time that the audience involvement with a film should really begin with the very first frame. What was happening with Saul Bass in the 50s was that the studio film was on its way out, in a way. And what you had in the older films was a kind of a, a credit sequence at the beginning that was um, almost perfunctory. It had nothing to do, really, nothing to do at all with the story of the picture. It didn't progress the psychological or emotional state of the characters in the film. It was like opening, in a, in a wonderful classical way, opening the, the cover of a beautiful book. And, and very often you'd see uh, films based on... Uh, literature, the opening literally a book, but they were um, like um, identification tags. So there seemed to be a real opportunity to use titles in a new way, to actually create a climate for the story that was about to unfold. The man with the golden arm woke everybody up and said, this is what the potential is for main titles. You thought this was just a throwaway kind of thing where we just put the type up and no one really designs it. And Saul Bass said, hey, wait a minute, designers, directors, here's an opportunity for us to take advantage of this real estate at the beginning of the movie and use it to help tell the story or help be the first scene or just use it to make something really interesting and beautiful. And everybody woke up. But when Saul Bass started making credits, the credits themselves were part of the film. And they had a clarity of a modern sensibility that took you into another decade, another two decades ahead. Saul Bass really was the first to reflect that and destroy once and for all that old concept of opening credits. I started in graphics. Then, as you've seen, I began to move that graphic image in film. Somewhere down the line, I felt the need to come to grips with the realistic or live-action image, which seemed to me at the time to be central to the notion of film. Hitchcock didn't discover Saul Bass in terms of bringing a graphic designer into the movie. Saul would always say, in terms of the big break, that was Otto Preminger. By 1958, Saul Bass was the most famous graphic designer in the world. I once saw a program of nothing but Saul Bass credits, and it was better than most movies. <laughs> Just one credit sequence after another. It's astonishingly good, astonishingly varied. And probably, of them all, Vertigo is the most astonishing. Vertigo, that was a really problematic film in terms of the studio. No one was very convinced it would do very well. So Hitchcock was concerned to make it, I think, as artistic as possible. And so he commissioned Saul Bass to do not only the titles, but also the advertising. this thing with main titles especially at that time where the title designer will have an idea my type is going to turn into smoke so for 28 credits it turns into smoke it 
does something, it does the same thing, and it kind of, regardless of how clever that pun is that you come up with, the main title sequences can get redundant if you do the same trick over and over again. And so Vertigo, you set it up, you have a pair of eyes, you have the eye, but you go into the eye, and then there's this kind of spiraling graphic elements internally behind the eye, but then at the end you come out of the eye again. So the fact that he at least changed it, he went somewhere, it had a beginning and a middle and an end, it makes it more interesting. So said, well, you know, I'm so obsessed with my own work. I was so obsessed with these little Jew forms for 10 years, at least before I got the chance to use them, that he said I kind of knew what Hitchcock was getting at. I, I could be as obsessional myself over my graphic design. Hitchcock and I never discussed Saul Bass, but it's quite obvious that Hitchcock approved of him because the designs, the psychedelic swirls in the title credits of Vertigo are simply brilliant. And they're matched by the names coming up from screen left and right and forming in Psycho and then being torn apart. <laughs> These are brilliant examples of an artist at work understanding that title designs are not simply to be inventive and impressive, they are to be thematically linked to what follows. And part of Saul Bass's genius was to understand what the movies were about and to do the designs for them appropriately. What Saul Bass was trying to do with Psycho, as, as he recounted it later, was to talk about something that never quite fits something is not quite right. And in the movie you're going to see, you soon find out that something is not quite right. Hitchcock paid him a huge amount of money at the time, $10,000, to be visual consultant. In, in hourly rates, Saul was paid more than the editor. Saul was hired to do three main things, really, but, but the very biggest of those was the shower scene. I believe that Saul Bass conceived the shower scene in Psycho because of the, how graphic it is, the upshot of the water coming out, but he didn't do it in a vacuum. I think Saul Bass had a more modern sensibility at that time than Hitchcock, and certainly brought Hitchcock up to speed in, in certain more beat-oriented, graphic storytelling that he could do in cinema. I had a very pleasant meeting with Mr. Bass when I was preparing the biography of Hitchcock, and, and my impression was that he felt it was a great moment in his career. He was thrilled to have done it. Um, he would have liked a little more credit, I think, but who doesn't? <laughs> that brief marriage between them is nevertheless an incredibly intense and productive one. I think Alfred Hitchcock let him exercise his gift to its fullest, and I think the same thing with Martin Scorsese. Come out, come out, wherever you are. In Cape Fear, we did a combination. Uh, it, was, it was a it was a homage to him, himself. It was Elaine and Saul Bass. At that point, he's working with Elaine, his wife. And also its own film in its own right, in a way, uh, which then somehow slipped into the close-up of her eyes, Julia Lewis's eyes, when she starts to tell the story. And I think that uh, was a direct reference, there's no doubt, to Hitchcock and, and uh, so, many, uh, so many of the other pictures that he made. It's very interesting to watch the silhouetted character descend into hell through all the Las Vegas lights, but obviously that's a metaphor for um, Robert De Niro's character. I think if, it, if it's just its own thing that isn't tipping its hat to the movie itself, we're not really doing our job as graphic designers. My work on titles was a marvelous opportunity to learn about filmmaking. I think I touched about every aspect of the process, both creative and technical. 
and I worked with many wonderful people. I think Saul Bass is prolific, and I think that he has done work that will forever be in the canon of graphic design as groundbreaking work. And we can go back to him for inspiration. Those credits stated that we were in a new world. And these credits are part of the story. It's part of the film. It's nothing you walk in on and, and, and talk during or just miss. No, this is the film is beginning. And we're part of the picture. <laughs> <laughs> 